it's your lovely abby dagrin and welcome back to my youtube channel lovelies today i'll be doing a natal chart analysis slash reading on johnny depp's natal chart i'll be speaking on his personality traits his characteristic traits and everything that has to deal with his career in regards to his natal chart we'll be able to get to know a lot more about him so please stay tuned for the rest of my video lovelies if you have not yet become a part of the Abby Dagren family, then this is your calling to do so. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when I upload videos on the daily. Also hit that like button because I know you guys will love this video. Make sure you share this video with all your friends, your family members, your enemies, anyone you know in general who would love this content, who's a great fan of Johnny Depp, and who really loves natal charts and the analysis of them as well. Johnny Depp was born on June 9, 1963, and this qualifies him to be a Gemini, and with this placement, he tends to be very intelligent, and he tends to be a very fun person to be around as well. He also tends to be a very great friend to people who are around him, and he has an energetic energy, and he has a great sense of humor that makes people around him very happy. So with him, you never really get a dull moment. He tends to like to be in the midst of things and likes to be in the middle of a lot of things for example humor he loves to be in the middle of social gatherings so people would be like you know what he's cool to be around he's very playful he's very inquisitive he's a very chatty person he loves to talk and at times he may change his mood quickly because you know gemini twins but he's a very good person Next up is his moon in Capricorn, and with this placement, it is hard expressing his emotions because a moon in Capricorn, Scorpio, and Aquarius have a hard time showing how they feel. And with this placement, he tends to be very reserved, and he loves to be very intelligent. He's also the type of person who is very rational, very well-rounded, and he is a practical person as well so practicality comes with him so instead of emotions practicality comes first and also he tends to be very reserved very committed very realistic he's a very capable person and he's a very resilient person as well he tends to be very ambitious and he may come across as not having emotions and he may be sarcastic and be cold but when you get to know a person with the moon in capricorn they tend to be very good people next up is his mercury in taurus and he tends to be a very patient person he loves to take his time in making his decisions because he wants to make sure the best decision is being made he's not going to rush into anything and when he makes a decision he's going to take everything into account whether it's every detail every consequence every pro and con he's going to make sure he looks at that before making a decision he tends to be a very understanding person as well he gives practical and down-to-earth advice, and it makes sense because it's an earth placement. He has a reflective mind. He's a very dependable person. He has a calming influence about him, and people tend to feel safe around him. He generates trust, and he always knows where you stand with him. He's a very traditional type of person. He has a rich tonal quality. A lot of people love to hear his voice because it's just very nice. He's the type of person that gives jokes out. He's a funny person. So that really describes his Taurus and Mercury. Next up is his Venus and Taurus. He tends to be very rational and predictable when it comes to his love life. He tries his best to be rational. So I know a lot of placements, when they get in love, they tend to really think with their heart. However, with this placement, he's going to think with his mind. And he also loves comfort over chaos. So if anything is chaotic in his relationship, he's more than likely going to leave. And he is also very nurturing in his relationships. 
he's very predictable which is good so you know what you see with him it's not an up and down he tends to be very loyal as well to the person he's in a relationship with and he wants to make sure they're doing okay he's very resourceful and he's going to make sure the relationship is beautiful he will give his partner gifts and he's very artistic and it makes sense because venus is exalted in taurus next up is his mars in virgo and he tends to still be practical and rational that has a lot to do with the earth energy he has in his chart and he is a person that loves rules and he loves to maintain a schedule as well rules and schedules are something that he lives by and in order for him to live a peaceful life and a comfortable life he needs to have a schedule he needs to know what he's going to be doing next and he needs to know the rules that go with it as well he also tends to have patience in order for him to accomplish his goals. He has the diligence needed as well. He has the strength of a will. He's very attentive, so he knows what's going on. And he loves to develop his intelligence. So while he's in this life, the intelligence that he increases or gets to know about, he uses that in order to increase his power. Next up is his Jupiter in Aries, and with this placement, he tends to have the energy for traveling. Makes sense because it's fire energy. Fire energy, they just love to travel and do things that are active, and this makes a lot of sense as to why he's in the occupation that he's in, because when you are an actor and actress, you do have to travel a lot in order to shoot movies. It may be from a different country, so traveling and the fact that he has his placement really works well in his behalf. He loves to meet challenges head on. That's the Aries energy as well. They love to meet energy head on and they don't really like to beat around the bush. And he also loves to engage in new opportunities. Getting to know new things or getting to do new things is something that he really loves to do and something that he enjoys as well. So this really does help him a lot in his journey. Up next is his Saturn in Aquarius, and he tends to be very reserved in his actions, even though his thoughts are considered to be unconventional at times. Um, being reserved in his actions, meaning that he loves to do things on the low, you may not know about his decision or the way he feels about something or the way he does something until maybe later on. However, he's a low-key type of person and a lot of the things that he does may be considered unconventional. That comes with a lot of the energy of Aquarius because a lot of things that Aquarius do in different placements are termed as very different, very eccentric. And at times it can be sad because he may have to learn how to discipline the mind, but he's also very innovative, very forward thinking person. He uses creative problem solving to become more efficient and learning to work with others to benefit the whole world is something that he may think of as well. Next up is his Uranus in Virgo, and with this placement, he tends to have very amazing intuition. And this makes sense because Virgo is a mutable sign, and mutable signs tend to have a great intuition. And he's able to use this intuition to help him assess any situation. And his intuition is more than likely right with this placement, so it really benefits him. It could also be used to tell which job he should take, which job he shouldn't take, what he should do and what he should do. And assessing the situation and how to move ahead in the right direction is something that really benefits him. He's able to be responsible and logical with this placement and he may look at any scenario and figure out the solution that makes the most sense. And this can really benefit him in the long run because it can help him with not only occupations but relationships as well. Next up is his Neptune and Scorpio and with this placement he is one of the rare signs that find pleasure and inspiration from the darkest of place. This makes sense because it's the Scorpio energy and at times they tend to be very mysterious and deep. Scorpios love to go deep into things and this is with any placement and they love to be very mysterious as well and what people may 
term as dark places, Scorpios may see as you notice another thing that needs to be looked into. He's extremely interested in things that are termed as not good. However, he may be the type of person that loves to go into healing and psychology and he loves to do things or experiment with new things that other people may deem not good, but he tends to do things on his own term and loves to go into things that are prohibited in society. Next up is his Pluto in Virgo and with this placement since he was born between 1957 and 1972. He is a part of Generation X. People within this generation tend to love perfection and they do have a down-to-earth attitude as well. He may be very hardworking, which he is, or anyone in this placement is very hardworking, they're self-improving, and they're very skilled people. They may go into things like environment or technology issues. And they're also the type of people that are willing to help others and offering the practical care needed to improve anyone's status. So they're the type of people who will help their friends out or help their family members out who need help in an occupation or anything in general that they need help with. And they will make sure that they get the help needed to achieve any of their goals. Next up is his North Node in Cancer, and in order for him to uncover his hidden gifts and talents, he will need to develop these attributes, which are noticing and validating his feelings, as well as other people's feelings, having empathy for others, nurturing and supporting others, building one's own foundation and security, honest disclosure of feelings and insecurities, having humility, being able to accept others without judgment, staying centered in one's own feelings, nurturing himself, connecting to his emotions, not repressing his emotions, identifying with the child part of himself and not the adult one, trusting what he feels and not being afraid for whatever comes his way, taking care of whatever comes his way and nurturing his feelings as well, surrounding himself with people who make him safe. So this is what he will need to accomplish in his lifetime. Next up is his Chiron in Pisces and with this placement he tends to have the wound of having no faith in himself or in humanity. He may have gone through something at a young age and he may feel very betrayed and he realized at that moment that humanity probably isn't the best and that this world is very cruel and unfair to people and this could really hurt him a lot. So he may not trust people. He may go into situations expecting to be treated cruelly or getting betrayal that it will occur at one point in the relationships. However, he will need to heal it by trying his best to realize that not everyone is that way and he can actually be a part of the change and help people to know that they are worth it and they don't need to act this way towards people. Next up is his rising slash ascendant in Leo and he tends to be a magnetic type of person and he really attracts attention to himself. He's self-aware of how he affects others and how others affect him. He tends to maybe at times have temper tantrums and jump to conclusions. He may always speak his mind and how he feels about a certain situation. He may find it difficult to take advice and he can at times have a problem with overdoing work. He's very confident. He's also very expressive of how he feels, so you know how he feels. He's very creative. He's a very warm-hearted person. He's a very independent person. He's very generous. He is also charismatic, and people love to be around him and get to get a glimpse of him as well. Last but not least is his Midheaven in Aries, and this is actually one of the top three most successful Midheavens, so it's Aries, Capricorn, and Leo, and with this placement, he tends to be in an occupation that always puts him in the spotlight. He is very hardworking, and he's 
going to try his best to be at the top of his occupation. He comes alive when he's in the spotlight. And self-employment or a career where he is in control of things is the best option for him because he doesn't like to answer to anyone. And he thrives in a career that calls for a creative solution. In order to ease his impulse, he loves to do things that are fun and he tends to be a fearless leader. He loves to be self-starting. He's very confident. He's very creative. He loves to give his opinion. He loves taking lead and he's very energetic. That's all I have for you lovelies today in regards to Johnny Depp's natal chart. Please let me know down below how you felt about it. Did you get to learn more about him? Did you get to get a better understanding of him? Also, let me know down below also who else you would want me to do a natal chart analysis on. And if you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, hit that notification bell, hit that like button, and share this video with everyone you know as well. If you have not yet followed me on all of my other social media accounts, then this is your time to do so because I do post a lot of content on there that is not posted here on YouTube. So make sure you go and check that out. Go like, follow, and share. I love you all dearly. You guys can support my Etsy store and my PayPal. And I will see you guys next time. Just know that you're precious and lovely. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye lovelies.